Hey folks, today I'm on a rooftop in the center of Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia to talk to you about tilt shift lenses. Most people think of these lenses as how to correct converging verticals or unfortunately as like an Instagram filter, but there's heaps that you can achieve with these lenses that's really unique and completely different to other lenses. Let me talk you through. Okay, now from the outset, I have to say two chip lenses are so drastically different to traditional lenses, trying to explain them just using words, even to someone in front of you holding the camera is really difficult. You really wanna get your hands on one and have a play with it. When you see what's happening through the lens, as you're making the adjustments, it's all gonna click. But I'm gonna do my very best to explain it to you as simply as I can. Today I'm demonstrating this with the Samyang 24mm tilt shift lens. So let's go in and I'll show you exactly how it works mechanically and tell you about the specs of this lens. And then we'll do demos of what you can actually achieve with it. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this one is it looks different. It's got this big chunky section right up the front. This Samyang is 35mm, it's full frame format. It's 3.5 to 22 in aperture. Now, whilst this has a bulbous front element, it's recessed. You can use traditional filters on this. And this one has 16 elements in 11 groups. Two of them are a spherical elements, and it also has two extra low dispersion elements. So certainly one of the most complicated lenses made by Samyang, and given the incredible things these kind of lenses can do, you want all of that optical technology in there. So why they call these tilt shift lenses is because on one axis it'll tilt and on the other axis it shifts. Again, looking at this Samyang, it's a 24 mil and it's an f3.5 aperture. 3.5 may not sound too fast, but what you can do with the depth of field on this lens is truly remarkable. First of all, looking on the right hand side, there's your lock for the shift. Now, unlocking that, then on the other side, we can adjust that dial and you see it's literally shifting the lens up and down. This one gives you plus and minus 12 millimeters of shift. And I'll explain what that does later, but just for now, keep in mind shift goes up and down. So you're shifting the, the lens up or down from staying parallel to the sensor, okay? And then if you look on the bottom of the lens, there's your lock for the tilt. Unlocking that, then looking on the top, we can tilt left and right, and this one gives us eight and a half degrees of tilt. Now, what that's doing, it's taking our front, our lenses from being parallel to the sensor to being on an angle. And why it's able to do that and still have full frame coverage is tilt shift lenses throw a much bigger circle of light over your sensor than a traditional lens. Traditional lens may just cover the sensor. This one throws heaps more so that even when you're moving up and down, left or right, you still have enough coverage that you're never gonna get grayed out areas on the sensor where it's not getting information. Now, let me explain what each of those functions do to you before we demonstrate it. So, when we're shifting, which means keeping it parallel but going up or down like that. Essentially, if that's the one to, you use to fix converging lines, if you've ever shot up at a building and then you see the buildings look like they're falling in on each other, that's why, it's because your perspective is too low. So if we're point aiming straight on, but then we tilt the lens up, it gives us the effect of being higher when we're shooting. So suddenly our converging lines go back to normal. And the same works if you're at the top of a building shooting down, you could sh shift it down and it gives you the, the effect of having been lower in the frame when you did the shot. And you can fix up all of those verticals. Really, really cool. So this is the classic. Here with the 24 mil with no shift applied, you can see as we lean up to get the building in, it looks like it's falling over because of our low vantage point. Here, as I apply shift, shifting the lens up, then you can see the building stays really square and they're actually taking it beyond where it needs to be. It makes the top of the building look even too big. Conversely, here we can tilt it down and then it really over-exaggerates the falling down effect. It makes it look like we're even lower than we were. Now, the second one is your tilt. Now, this is the coolest one that I think a lot of people know as an Instagram filter, but there's so much more you can do with it. I'm sure you've seen that band of focus or what people like to call miniature or toy mode where you get a selective line of focus sharp. 
That's what you can do here, but you can do so much more. So on a traditional lens, your sensor, then all the elements of the lens are parallel. And what that does is it means that when I focus, say, back at you on the camera, if it's three meters away, then everything that is also parallel to the sensor will be in sharp focus. That's a fair enough concept for everyone. Your line of focus, your zone of focus is a straight line from the sensor, as you are all of your lenses. Clear? On this, by being able to tilt, as I tilt the front of the lens, instead of my line of focus being here, as I tilt the lens, say, that direction, my line of focus tilts as well. And it, the further you tilt, the more extreme it becomes. So you can have something a meter away here and 100 meters away back over there. If they're in the line of focus, will both be sharp and then things left and right of them are out. Gives you crazy effects. So the miniature effect is achieved by generally by being up high, tilting down, and then you focus and you get a small line of focus. Let me show you some demos of that. First of all, it may seem counterintuitive that if you want the line on the right, you, vote, you tilt to the left, but that's just how it works. So if you want to put the left out of focus, you tilt it to the left, and then by adjusting your focus, you move that band of focus throughout the right-hand side of your frame. The bigger the aperture, the wider the area of sharp focus is going to be. And then conversely, if you rotated it, if you want the line of sharp focus at the bottom, you tilt the lens up and vice versa, you tilt it down to get the line of sharp focus through the top of the frame. So this is one of the classic situations to use the tilt function. Here we are with none applied and you can see the whole scene is sharp. And then here I've rotated the lens, I apply the tilt upwards, turn my camera to point downwards, and then I get that line of sharp focus through the front of the bikers. Make sense? Let's take a look at some stills. Here first off with the bikes with just the front row, then another one, and then here going left to right instead of top to bottom. There's a scene with none applied, and then here tilting it so that just the left of the frame is in focus, and then there so just the right of the frame is in focus. So beyond miniatures and stuff, think of what you could do with portraits and just getting parts of the shot in focus. Now the other thing I think a lot of people don't realize is the lens will actually rotate 90 degrees. So then you're actually able to tilt up and down and shift left and right. So you can get those effects in each of the different orientations. And you can actually combine them as well to get you know, an effect of converging lines and selective focus at the same time. In fact, both sections of it will rotate, which then lets you move it into any combination of left, left, up, down, whatever. So you can be shifting and tilting in any combination of directions. And it's quite handy. It lets you put the lock and movement buttons all onto the same sides. Now, the selective depth of field is one thing, being able to just have that small line of focus. But you can do the opposite and have it give you everything in focus. Think about this for a second. If I rotate my lens 90 degrees and then I tilt my lens down, instead of having a, foc a line of focus here, I'm tilting it down this way, right? So then if I'm shooting a landscape of say a field going off into the distance and I wanna have all of those wildflowers in sharp focus, let's say with the amount of light I have, I'd need to be at F16 and then my shutter speed's gonna be too slow and the wildflowers will blur out. By putting my line of focus like this, I can stay at f3.5 or f4, get everything in sharp focus, and it's just the air above the wildflowers that are going to be out of focus. Really, really handy. So you adjust exactly where that line of focus is, whether you're doing tilt shift or the other method of increasing your depth of field, by the greater your aperture, the more will be in focus. And then by adjusting your focus, you move exactly where that line of focus is. It all becomes really clear when you're looking through the viewfinder. Here's some more video example. So let's explore this whole thing again. There we go with the whole scene in focus. Then as I apply the tilt, you can see I'm able to get just the sky in sharp focus, having the buildings out. And then by adjusting my tilt and my focus, I can move that line of focus down through the scene to get different parts in focus. They're kind of just the middle of the scene is in focus. Taking a look at some stills from that, there we are with just the sky in focus. 
There we go with a little bit more, the top of the buildings as well. And then there, mixing it up again, and we're just getting the middle of the buildings in focus. Then here we go at a night scene. As I adjust my focus, I've tilted the lens down, I rotate it, then I'm tilting down, and we're getting that whole scene in sharp focus despite it being at f3.5. Then as I change the focus and move my tilt, we can get really nice out of focus areas everywhere, again, despite it being at f3.5. Again, looking at some stills, Here's another way we can use it. Instead, tilting left to right, there we go. You can see the I had a bit of movement through the traffic lights and on the right of the frame, it's nice and sharp. Then on this one, I've put the angle of the line of focus on a diagonal through the scene. So even though these people on the escalator are much closer than the women in the background, they're both in that line of focus. So both of them are in focus whilst things just left and right of them are out. Okay, and here's two more examples to show you more creative ways you can use the selective depth of field and that line of focus. Here, focusing on some incense, but just getting a line through the left of frame in sharp focus, you can really put attention where you want it and then let it blur out. And I could adjust my aperture to have that fall off and sharp area varied. And then this one, I'm standing close to the wall at this end on the left to hand edge. And then obviously what's further away from me, normally you'd need F16 or F22 to get all of that in sharp focus. Here, I tilted my lens to the left, which means that my line of focus went on an angle through the scene, and I get the whole wall in sharp focus, wide open at 3.5. I know a lot of people are interested in these lenses for architecture photography, but think about this if you're doing interiors. You can also use the lens to hide yourself in mirror shots. If you want to get a shot into a mirror, obviously you and the camera need to be in it. As we said, when we shift our lens up and down, it's like moving our position in the frame. If we rotate it 90 degrees and then shift right, it gives the effect of us having been further right in the frame. So line up a shot, get yourself just out of the mirror, shift right, then you'll get the perspective as if you're shooting straight into the mirror without any distortion, but you won't be in the shot. So look, there's so many different effects that you can achieve with these lenses. I've been playing with this like crazy and really enjoying it and using it in situations that I really didn't think I would, where you just, you know, you start to find opportunities where that selective focus of small amounts or large amounts to be able to put the line of focus through your scene where you want it. And of course, to be able to fix verticals so handy when you're traveling and you're shooting up a lot at big monuments. Love to hear your thoughts. Have you ever tried one? Have you ever looked at getting one? Please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you soon with more videos from Bhutan and Mongolia.